Hello, and welcome to Every Rock Has a Story. In today's story, we're going to go into the unknown. This story is about the unknown, and the rock for today's story is this rock right here. I'll give you a closer look at it later on. But this story begins with some work I was doing with a friend of mine named Mark. Mark lives in Virginia. And it turns out that geologists and scientists a lot of times use computers and coding. We write codes. I bet some of you guys have done some coding. And we write these codes so that we can predict and understand which rocks and minerals will tell the stories that we want to learn about. And so Mark and I were using a code, and Mark is really good at computers and codes, and one of the minerals that was predicted in the computer code that we were using was abbreviated C-A-R-P. This was a mineral that the code predicted might tell the story we cared about. And the story that we were interested in learning about was a story about water. Remember when I told you about the water rock and the serpentine? Well, this was more of that story about water. But the computer predicted that this mineral that started C-A-R-P would help tell us about the story of water. Now, I remember when I saw this result come from our computer code, and I said to myself, C-A-R-P, C-A-R-P, I have been studying rocks and minerals for 30 years. I can't think of any mineral that starts C-A-R-P. I've never heard of whatever this is. Now, do you think I was embarrassed? Do you think I was sad because I didn't know what C-A-R-P was? Do you think I wanted to hide it and not admit to anybody that I didn't know what this mineral was, that I'd never heard of it? No. No, no, not at all. In fact, there's nothing more exciting for a scientist than discovering that there's something new out there that you don't know. Discovering the unknown is the most exciting thing for a scientist, and that's because science is not about what you know. Science is about what you don't know. And reveling in the unknown and enjoying the unknown and letting our curiosity seek those answers to the unknown so we can take that opportunity to learn something new. So I wasn't embarrassed, I wasn't sad, I was excited. And so I went to my friend Mark and I said, Mark, can you tell me what mineral starts C-A-R-P? I don't know. And Mark said, yes, Ethan, I can tell you. That stands for the mineral carpholite. Carpholite, the P-H. And I said, well, Mark, thank you for telling me, but I've still never heard of carpholite. I've never seen it. I don't know anything about it. So Mark said, Ethan, you should talk to another one of our friends named Philippe. Now, Philippe lives in France. And I asked Philippe, I said, Philippe, my friend Mark told me that you could help me learn about carpholite. And Philippe said, well, yes. I know a lot about carflight. I've been studying it for many years. And I know a place in the high French Alps that I can take you to show you carflight. And so I said, oh, thank you, Philippe. And I want to show you where Philippe took me to see my very first carflight. So we climbed high up into the Alps. This was on another National Science Foundation expedition that I took with a bunch of my friends, and it was led by Philippe. In fact, that mountain right there, that's Mon Viso. That was in another one of my videos where we talked about collecting the water rock. This is on the other side of the mountains. This is in France. In fact, you can see some of my friends right there. They're standing on the border between France and Italy. And after going way up there, we climbed down into another valley nearby. This is also in France. And we climbed way down that valley to a place that Philippe knew, and this is where we gathered. Now look, there's Philippe right there in the brown, and those are all my other friends on this NSF 
expedition, and Philippe was telling us about the story of Carphalite. And in fact, he said this was the place where we could find Carphalite. And I was excited. We were all excited because we were going to learn something new. I knew that I was going to learn something new that day. And so we climbed up the hill and we looked around and sure enough we found Carflight. In fact, Philippe told me that one of the samples of Carflight that I found was one of the best Carflights he'd ever seen in his life and so I was so proud. There is another part to this story. Two of my other friends on that trip, Annie and Paul, thought it would be a funny joke if they took my special Carphalite sample and they hid it from me for a couple days. And I was sad and worried that I'd lost the Carphalite. And then a couple days later, they gave it back to me and I was relieved and we all laughed. Well, this is my Carphalite sample that I brought for you today. This is Carphalite. This rock has Carphalite in it. This was the unknown that I learned about with my friends. And let me show you up close. It's a really neat rock. The gray part here isn't the carphalite, but these white stripes, most of that white color is the mineral quartz. But if you look carefully, especially down here, you'll see sort of a feathery green mineral. You can see it kind of shining and glinting. And that feathery green mineral, that's carphalite. There's more of it over there, and you can see some of it on the back too. There's some nice of that feathery green carphalite. And that was the very first carphalite that I found on that trip. So you see, we can learn a lot about science and about the earth by talking to our friends and learning from others. And so for me, this is a very special rock because when I think about this rock, I think about all my friends. I think about Mark, who taught me what it was. I think about Philippe, who was so generous in taking me and all my other friends up into the French Alps to collect and see my first Carphalite. I even think of Annie and Paul and that fun joke they played on me and how we laughed together and had fun. So a lot of what science is is about people and learning from each other and working together. And that's actually one of the best parts about doing science is learning from each other. And you know what? That day, I learned a lot from Mark and a lot from Philippe. But in other times, they had questions about what certain rocks were made of, and they came to me and to my laboratory, and I helped answer those questions for them. So we all learn from each other. So the unknown is one of the most exciting things we can look into. By the way, Philippe also told me the story of this Carphalite. This Carphalite is 40, 50 million years old, and this was another place where deep water went down under the continents and this rock cracked up probably during some earthquakes and those cracks filled psh, psh, with fluid water shooting through those cracks and then the water had quartz in it and it had carphalite and that carphalite still contains water today just like our water rock did the other day carphalite is another water rock that i learned about from philippe and from Mark. So I hope you enjoyed this story about the unknown and how to a scientist, the unknown is the most exciting part of the job. See you next time.